Welcome back to What Art You Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Lorraine 155 Mini 51. It's the Tier 8 French SPG. This one's located on the south or eastbourne of Malinovka and it's under the command of Oxidor of Olymp. And the reason it hasn't got any marks on the barrel is because Oxidor has opened an account on the NA server and he's marking all the SPGs in quick succession. Game on. Well, one of the fastest arties in the game, because it's actually based on the Rain 40 ton tank. It does 60 kilometers an hour, and so it's particularly quick at relocating to a new firing position. It's a 155 millimeter howitzer, which as you can see, is capable of doing 680 alpha, penetrating 45 millimeters of armor with a burst radius of 7.6 meters. He spotted the target, so SU-130 PM making his way up the hill, and he's about to get interrupted. Oh, that was a direct hit! Oh! Now that's why it's important to watch to see what happens to the shell. That SU-130PM has virtually no armor, and he just got hit by a 155mm round, which must have done considerable damage to him, because it was hitting his side armor as he was driving up the hill. And so at this moment, I think he's just lost maybe as much as 700 hit points of his health, and he won't be a happy bunny. Oh, that narrowly missed the LT-432, but it teaches him an important lesson. Watch out, there's somebody across the valley, across the map, who is capable of doing severe damage to you. But the LT-432 hasn't learned his lesson, and he's still there. But we've noticed an AFK. It's an EBR-90, one of the enemy light tanks. Rounds out straight away, lands alongside him for... 444 hit points, but he picked up a load of stun assists immediately after his 555, which is a good start. So he's already got a blind shot, which could be as much as 700 hit points, and now he's picked up another 555 of stun assist. Next target is a T95, the Doom Turtle. Rounds out in him when he aimed ahead of him, thinking he was actually going to pull forward, but in fact he just dummied us to say I'm going to go forward and he went backwards instead so although we didn't get anything off that shot we lined up for the next one I'm getting ready to shoot it's quite a fast reload on this RT 28.76 by the book but you can see Oxidor's got it down to 24.32 rounds out and direct hit 99 hit points but of course remember the T95 is a super heavy tank so it has masses of armor which makes it very difficult to take down. But it also does have huge fuel tanks on the back of the vehicle, which of course are an easy target. Now, somebody has already requested he fire at the 7032, and instead he's firing through the Borsic, and he gets a penetrating shot. 631 hit points, which is a low roll, but he did get a penetrating shot on the Brask, who's not a happy bunny, because he's now down to half his hit points. And that's really going to crimp his style for the rest of the game. Okay, we've got tanks lining up to make a move, including a TS-54, but we're going for the CC-1 Mark II. It lands just in front of him for 228. Now you can see our guys are encountering their guys. And the 703 is actually firing into their side, which makes him particularly annoying for our teammates. But I think at the moment, because these tanks are all lined up together, and our guys are focusing on them. Oxidor's decided these are the more worthy targets. That's a direct hit on the uh, TS-54 for 214. He stunned the 257 alongside him, who's already burned his first aid kit, so he can't do anything until it just wears off. Okay, next target, I think is going to be the 103. But he's lining the shot up so he can actually hit both at the same time. 257 is going to get it instead. Rounds out. Guy pulls forward. Takes a hit for 119. He gets stunned. So yes, he's decided that this is the area that he needs to devote his attention to at the moment. Because there's multiple tanks all together. Which means more chance of getting uh, damage. You can see the 703 on the enemy team went down. Here's the Barask. Oh, he lives again, but he got stunned in the process. I think he knew a shell was inbound because he pulled back very, very quickly when he knew that was happening. 
The M103 is relocated to help the Barask on the side since the 703 went down. And we're almost loaded, which means the Barask could be on the receiving end of a 155. No, he's decided to fall back a long way. And we're still looking at the Barask. Grabs out on him, he pulls forwards just as our shell arrives. So he may have missed most of the effect, but not all of it. The TS-54 is now working with the M103, seeing as they've got that rock area to help them, protect them from shells coming up from down below. So T-30 on the spotting point, he must be aiming in this general direction. M103 next. Oh, it zips right over the top of him to land behind. Not a great uh, shot, but it was in the general direction. I think the M103 knew that the shell was coming, but he's rocking backwards and forwards taking a shot as he can. Things are not going well for us. We're two tanks down. The enemy do seem to have a large number of wrecks on the hill that they can use for cover. And another shell that missed the target, but did get stunned. Now, if you saw the replay with the uh, GW Tiger that I posted on the page just recently, you saw an, an arty that actually managed to score a massive amount of stun assist. Not by aiming at the tanks, but trying to stun them and then get his teammates to shoot at the enemy, and it seemed to work. At the moment, we're aiming in the general direction of the uh, Leopard prototype, who's actually close to where our Turtle 1 is located. We're trying to get shots on him, but he's in a fold in the ground there. I think you can just make out the fold. And over here, we've got the 257. He's gone down by the dip. And the TS-54 is both trying to do the same. The TS-54 is now one shot. Rounds out. It was a near miss, but it's 195 hit points. And that makes the TS-54 a splash kill now. And he has gone. Oh, no, the TS-54 didn't go. It was actually the 257. But now we've got the Barask down there. And, well, we would need to penetrate him to get a hit and to take him out of the game. But he's using the wreck for cover. And he does take a penetrating shot and goes down immediately afterwards. So that was a really useful one. He knew that the Barask was going to go back to the wreck for cover. And he lined the shell up on that spot. And he got a penetrator. Nice. Okay, TS-54. Splash kill, remember. And he's gone which means the entire enemy attack that was coming down the hill has been wiped out, but only at the cost of our guys actually moving up the hill to provide cover. Now, we've got no cover near the cap area, and you can see that Oxidor is moving as fast as he can to get up with his teammates as they redeploy, because he needs their protection, just in case the enemy Leopard prototype actually tried to make it round and take us out whilst we were sitting at the far south side of the map. Okay, this is a good spot to fire from because there's plenty of cover. He's laid down a few trees. And that will now provide him with whatever cover he needs to to dive into quickly if the enemy decides to move from that direction. He's doing a bit more forestry work as he goes. Again, laying the trees down in such a way that they provide him cover from enemy tanks to the south. Okay, we've got a Unis 16. He's on the other side of the battlefield. Leopard prototype just killed our Leopard prototype. Okay, so we're taking the battle to them now. But he's trying to change his position in such a way as he's not going to be vulnerable to the enemy tanks. But it can still get a decent shot on the enemy. We haven't seen that SU-130PM since he got hit right at the start of the game. And remember, that was quite a bad hit by him. Oxidor already has 2,285 hit points of damage. That figure is probably going to go up quite dramatically when we spot the SU-130PM, because, of course, he's going to be missing quite a few. Oh, that's another direct hit! Oh, he just got another direct hit! Wow! And... It looks like the Yunez was the one who was the recipient for that shell. He's not happy. He's down to half his hit points now. Now, he's facing our Scorpion, but he's also facing Oxidor at the top of the hill. As he's coming towards us, it makes it much easier to get direct hits on the enemy. 
because they're much more predictable when they're going forwards and backwards. Rounds out. Oh, a kill shot! Just proves what I'm saying. It makes it much easier to hit them when they're coming towards you or going away from you. You just line the shot up, judge exactly where the aim point is, and bang, they go out the game. And so he's got his first kill of the game. But it's going very, very well for him now because he's uh, two and a half K of actual damage and he's taken another gun out of the game. It's five versus four. The enemy RT in this one's a GD GW Tiger P, the Geschutzwagen Tiger Porsche. Now he's a fairly slow RT, but he's probably at the back of the map. And we're guessing that he's in that corner. Okay, we're lined up right in the corner of the map at the moment. It's going to be difficult for the enemy to locate us. If that leopard prototype's on the prowl. Oh, now the enemy scorpion just killed our T-30 down in the uh, west on the map. And there's the GW rounds out. Oh, well, he got ammo racked, but Oxidor's shell would have hit the target. And there's the SU-130 PM and he's missing half his hit points. And our score must be higher as a result. He's moving towards the edge, towards the inlet. You can't see him, but he's probably in the bushes. Okay, a shell just went in there, but he's going for the next bush along. Is he going to take the shot? No, he's marking the spot. He's saying to my teammates, I need to see what's in that bush. The enemy have only got three left. The Scorpion G, the SU-130 PM, and the Leopard Prototype. Their hit points are around about the same as ours. We now know that the SU-130PM is half of his hit points, and the rest of them were probably taken by Oxidor. They've got no RT support. Just need to see the, the targets to do something. The Conway's moving towards the cap area, but remember that's on a height, so he would be visible from the uh, bushes, the trees area. So if the enemy's at the tree line, they would see where he was and then he could get taken out. So it's probably advisable for him to use that inlet where the Scorpion G was last seen and move towards the enemy from there because you're in a ground depression. Much easier to get closer to the enemy. The Scorpion's moving down the north edge of the map, heading west. He's probably going to be the first one to encounter one of the enemy tanks. So we need to be ready, looking exactly where he can see. Try and aim ahead of your teammates to see their aiming distance, what they're likely to see first. And you'll be dialed in just as they spot the enemy and then get a quick kill. Well, he didn't find anyone on this side of the inlet, which means they must be on the other side. There's the SU-130 PM. Rounds out. Kill shot. He's out the game. That's the second kill for Oxidor. Okay, we're right up against the edge of the map. We just lost our Scorpion to the Leopard Prototype. But now there's only two enemies left, the Leopard Prototype and the Scorpion G. And the good news is we know exactly where they are. They must be in Grid Square B1 or C1. The Conway's moved into the cap area. Two minute warning. T30 is trying to approach using the ground in his advantage. Right now, it would be a good idea for us to get closer to the enemy. There's the Leopard prototype. He's on the move. Rounds out. Just misses him, unfortunately. Yeah. The Scorpion G just took out our Conway. And now it's just the T-30 and us on this battle. We're almost reloaded. The T-30 is going to be a lot more timid now that the uh, his teammate in the Conway went down. Remember, there's two down there. There's the Leopard again. Line up the shot. He's gone. The T-30 nuked him. Well, we now see the Scorpion G is actually the other side of the cap area. We're just lining up the shot. Trying to work out where he's going. Round out. Oh, it went long. We're into the last minute now. It's all about killing that Scorpion G as fast as we possibly can. 
And he got him. The T13 nailed him. And that's it. The game's over. It's a victory. Here's the end of battle results, and that was the first ace tanker for Oxidor in the Lorraine 15551 on the NA server. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 13. He got a gauze medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points for his own vehicle. And he picked up a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team, despite the fact that he got two kills. But most important of all, this was a first ace. You can see that because of the scrolls underneath the M. That's the first time you've got it. You only get that the once. He got a win eight of 5,402 from that game, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. The Scorpion on the enemy team managed 5,084 hit points of damage. He got the high caliber. Second highest damage went to the T30 on our team with 4,810 hit points. He picked up a top gun. And the third highest damage actually went to the Leopard Prototype on the enemy team with 3,788 hit points. When it came to, uh, uh, to Oxidor, he got 3,565. But sadly, there was another enemy tank ahead of him on the uh, hit points list so there was three on his own team one on his own which means that he's in fifth place when it comes to damage when it came to kills though it was easily the t30 he got six kills in that game four kills went to the leopard prototype on the enemy team three kills went to the scorpion g and the cc1 mark ii on the enemy team and then it came down to two kills and that's oxidor in fourth place on kills when it came to base XP, though, he's in second place because the T30 managed 1,240, Oxidor managed 1,108, and the 50 TP on his team 1,026, which means all three players managed to get over 1,000 base, with the next highest being the Scorpion with 827. And, uh, yeah, so very well done. These guys did a hell of a lot of effort to win the game. Let's have a look at detail. Well, 24 shots fired, a huge amount of ammunition expended, nine direct hits on the enemy, four penetrating shots. Let's have a quick look at the figures for that SG-130PM. Well, despite the fact that he killed him for 46 hit points right at the end of the game, you can see he did get a low roll penetrating shot. In fact, he got two penetrating shots on the SG-130PM, the one that actually hit him initially, and then the second one which finished him off at the end of the game. So very well done on that. That blind shot right at the start of the game, that did generate a huge amount straight away. Nine direct hits on the enemy, four penetrating shots, 15 splash, Damage of 3,565 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. If we just check to see which ones, other ones he penetrated. Well, he penetrated that Barask twice, once when he was up on the hill, and um, once also when he uh, stood behind the wreck, using it for cover, and didn't think about the fact that there was an Artie nearby who could actually fire over the, the uh, rock, over the wreck, and right into him. So he took a double hit and he wasn't a happy bunny because, of course, um, most of his hit points were lost to RT direct hits. There was also nine enemy vehicles damaged, two killed. So there's the Confederate. 562 hit points of stun assist of 17 stuns. So he didn't actually win this one from a stun or assist on this game. He actually got it from mostly basic damage that he made himself. Three and a half K of it. When it came to credits, he actually earned a profit on this game. 2,174 is not a lot, but then he did have to pay for ammunition consumables and 6,648 experience points as well. Uh, but he did get a mission completion in there as well. So a very good first ace tanker in the Lorraine 15551. Congratulations to Oxenor. It's not his first. Obviously, he has fully marked all of his arties on the EU server, and he's now doing it on the NA server, which means a whole lot of work to actually get them up to speed. But uh, it's nice to see good results coming out of the NA server. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.